Hey everyone, it's JR with St. Jean Creative Photography. And you know, in today's world where everybody with a smartphone can capture a moment, the art of photography has never been more accessible. But with so many photographers out there, how do you ensure your special moments are captured perfectly? Well, at St. Jean Creative Photography, I understand that selecting a photographer can be overwhelming, whether it's for a wedding, a family portrait, a special event, or for business reasons, you want someone who not only has the technical skills, but also the ability to understand and bring your vision to life. But many people also don't realize that there is a legal side to photography and a customer service side of photography. So in this video, I'm going to share essential tips while guiding you through what to look for and what questions to ask when you're looking for a photographer. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more insights and tips from the world of professional photography and with a, with a focus on the client. So let's dive in. Okay, so this may surprise you, uh, but my first tip when looking to hire a photographer is make sure to ask your photographer if they carry liability insurance. Why? Because, well, think about it in today's world. Carrying liability insurance is crucial for photographers as it provides protection against accidents and legal issues. If someone is injured or property is damaged during a photo shoot, liability can cover all these associated costs preventing significant out-of-cost expenses and hope not letting rates go up and things such as that. Um, the insurance is also essential for legal protection as it helps cover legal fees and settlements in cases of lawsuits related to you and your work. Without such coverage, these financial burdens could become very overwhelming. Um, so the idea behind the insurance is ask them if they have liability insurance. If they don't carry any kind of liability, you should consider not hiring them because if somebody that you hire or that's in your party gets hurt or injured, this insurance may help cover the cost of that person as well. Additionally, having liability, liability insurance enhances a photographer's professional credibility, often being a requirement for clients, especially in corporate events or in those types of settings because a lot of venues will require that your photographer has at least a minimum a one million dollar policy so you want to check with them so make sure you number one that your photographer carries liability insurance so my next tip when hiring a photographer is make sure they carry a business license I don't know of any state, city, county, uh, unincorporated, incorporated, anywhere that they don't require a business to actually have a business license. Uh, many people have said to me, well, I don't need a license to take pictures. No, you don't. Not in the state of Florida. You don't need a license to take photos, but you do need a license to operate a business. So if somebody is charging you money for your photos, they are operating a business and they should have a business license. Um, when a photographer has a valid business license, it indicates that they have fulfilled the necessary legal requirements for them to operate their photography business. So make sure they're in compliance with the local regulations. Um, by asking for a business license, you can ensure that your photographer is operating within the legal framework of your locality. Um, this may include things such as tax obligations, safety regulations, and other legal considerations. Um, and also, it provides consumer protection because if the business is listed with a city or a state or, or an ordinance um, and you have an issue with that photographer, this just gives you a little more credibility when you need to resolve your issues with them. So please make sure that your photographer has a business license. So my next tip when you're looking to hire a photographer is to see if that photographer has actually incorporated themselves as a legal business. Now, you're not required to be a corporation as a photographer. You could be a sole proprietor. Um, but has that business actually taken the time to register with the state that they're in or with another state? Uh, this is very important because it provides legal protections. It provides financial protections. And it, for the photographer, it separates 
their business from their personal life. So it's really important that it, when someone starts their business that they actually go and incorporate themselves. Uh, when a photographer incorporates their business, it means they have established separate legal entity for their business, such as a limited liability company or a corporation. And by doing so, they create a legal separation between their personal assets and their business liabilities. Um, it also promotes professionalism and credibility. Incorporating a business can enhance the perception of professionalism and credibility. So make sure you can always go to a state website, like their the state incorporate corporation site and you can actually type in the name of the business and see if they're actually incorporated in that state. Um, also when they incorporate and they register with the state um, they'll be given a sales tax license as well and this is very important so depending on the state you're in sales tax may be required to be paid for by the photographer depending on the kind of services that it is like for instance sometimes some states don't tax digital transfers, but they do tax things such as prints and albums and thumb drives and, and CDs and things like that. Uh, so if they're not paying their taxes, then they probably haven't done anything with the state to incorporate themselves or to list themselves as a legal business in that state. So my next tip in hiring a photographer is when you're hiring a photographer, make sure that you get a contract or an agreement when you decide to hire the photographer for their services. Um, offering a contract to clients is crucial for establishing clear expectations, protecting both parties legally, maintaining professionalism, and ensuring financial security. A contract establishes the terms and conditions that both the photographer and the client agree upon, it outlines the scope of what you're looking for about your project, the services the photographer will provide, uh, how they will deliver the final product, and any special requirements or limitations. So make sure you protect yourself legally and always ask for a contract or an agreement. And the more detailed that you can list this out in that a contract or agreement, the better it is for both parties. Um, it is a legal document that is signed by the photographer and the client. It states the rights and responsibilities of both parties, including issues such as copyright, usage rights, and payment terms. So make sure your payment terms are spelled out in the contract and any, any type of refund policy should also be stated inside that contract. Um, if your photographer does not offer a contract or an agreement of some kind, then you should seriously consider not working with that person because they're probably not a legal business at that point as well. So my next tip on hiring a photographer um, is, is the photographer a full-time photographer or a part-time photographer? Now, while part-time photographers can still produce excellent work, the advantage of hiring a full-time photographer stems from their dedication, experience, professionalism, specialization, and the resources that they use to achieve the results that you're looking for. A full-time photographer is dedicated to their profession. They do this every day. They have studied their craft. They have honed their craft, uh, which often translates into a higher level of commitment and availability. So a full-time photographer is going to have more of a chance of being available when you need them. And a part-time photographer may have very limited, they may only be able to do it in the evenings or on one day on the weekend because of the full-time work commitments or family commitments or things such as that. So think about when you're hiring a photographer, are they a full-time person or are they a part-time person? I mean, a full-time photographer runs their business. That's their main source of income. It's more likely to have a structured business setup. It's more likely to be incorporated and insured and things such as that. So just to ask them, I mean, that, that, it shouldn't be your final thought, but a full-time photographer versus a part-time photographer, and it can make a big difference in the customer service that you receive. So my next uh, tip for when hiring a photographer, and I, I, this is called the budget photographer, or a photographer who's probably on the lower end of the, of the cost scale for most people. And even though I really kind of hate the term budget photographer, 
Um, but they're really designed for people who are looking for a quick and easy solution, perhaps. They're looking for a lot of photos. Um, and maybe a budget photographer is somebody who hasn't been doing photography for quite some time. Um, so oftentimes you'll hear the term, you get what you pay for. Now, I'm not saying a budget photographer can't produce really high quality work because some of the ones that I know can and they do an excellent job. But for the most part, they really lack the, the time and experience in honing their craft. So it's really about the full time photographer who may charge a little bit more. And then there's also high end photographers. So it's about the quality and the experience. I mean, in many cases, budget photographers lack the experience, the technical expertise, and the artistic vision of more seasoned photographers. So photography is not just about having a camera. It requires learning. It requires knowledge of composition, lighting, posing, and post-processing techniques, uh, Photoshop, and all this kind of fun stuff. Um, so a non-budget photographer is more likely to have that experience. So also customer service and professionalism, while not always the case, budget photographers may not prioritize customer service or professionalism the same way that a full-time, more higher-end photographer would do that. So they may take longer to get your, your photos to you. They may take longer to respond to phone calls, whereas a you know, higher-end, full-time photographer is more likely to answer your calls within a certain amount of time and deliver their, their, their product on time. Um, also, what you'll find too with budget photographers is there's a lack of consistency in the quality of their photos. And that's really just because they're probably part-time or gig workers and they just haven't done a lot of photography and have gained the experience. And that will change over time as they get more experience. So what you have to do is just think to yourself, um, do I want to invest money in good quality images that are going to last and I'm going to cherish forever? Or do you just want to pay someone 100 bucks and get 500 photos? So think about the quality level in that as well. You won't get a good quality for a, a lot of photos. So, so think about that budget photographer versus a full-time higher-end photographer. So my next tip when hiring a photographer is when you're looking at their work, and you're looking at it and you're seeing that they're using a lot of filters on their photos. You may see, oh, they have it, it looks dark or it has kind of an orangey look to every photo or it's a sapey look on every photo or they've, they have layered on some type of a filter, but it's on every single photo. So think about that for a moment. I mean, oftentimes when you see a photographer overusing filters, they're trying to overcompensate perhaps for a lack of skill in certain other areas. Uh, when photographers heavily rely on filters, it can be a sign that they're compensating for deficiencies in other aspects of their photography. They may not be doing the lighting that they need to. Um, it may be being used as a crutch to help them make better photos. Um, maybe they have technical shortcomings or something such as that. Um, Oftentimes it could be just from a lack of vision, you know, they're like, oh, I'm going to take all these great photos and I'm going to overlay a romantic filter on top of them so they look romantic, like every single photo. But ask yourself, is that really what you're looking for when you're hiring a photographer? Now, I'm not saying that the use of filters is wrong in photography, but I think a more experienced higher end photographer will use the filters in a really cool artistic way to create something that you're going to want to print and maybe hang on a wall and it's not going to be a heavy heavy filter you know making everything look the same and they're not doing it on every single photo either a higher end photographer is going to take the photos and then you're going to have a review with them and if you pick out that one you want you can the, the photographer can go in there and then he can tweak it or maybe use some filtering but just watch it out when someone is using a filter and you see all their work and you go to their web page or their Instagram and every single photo has the exact same filter on every single picture. So is it a style thing? 
somewhat but or is it just having kind of a lack of a little bit of experience as well can they actually use lighting properly to make the photo pop so ask yourself that like i said not necessarily a bad thing to use filters but it should be done discreet discretionately and for artistic reasons and not necessarily just to cover up every single photo And my next tip for hiring a photographer when you're looking to hire one uh, is light, I call it lighting. And there's a reason I call it lighting. I'm going to tell you a little story. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was walking the beach at sunset and just enjoyed a beautiful night. And I was enjoying the walk and I ran across five different photographers all doing photo sessions on the beach. And they were sunset photos. And I walked by four photographers. They put the subjects on the shoreline with the sun behind them and proceeded to take photos. Came to the fifth photographer and she was, it was a wedding actually, and she was doing the same thing. She put the couple along the shoreline with the sun behind them and she had her camera and she had a light with her, a strobe light on a, on a thing. She had an assistant and they were holding the light and the light was going right on to the people and she took the photo. And as I was walking back down the beach, passing those other four photographers again, I was thinking to myself, you know, the only person who's going to get really awesome sunset photos is the one photographer who used the light, the strobe light, the flash, or whatever you want to think about it. And so lighting is really important. Does your photographer know how to light their subject? I mean, there's natural light, and then there's, they call it artificial light, but really all light is natural. Um, but, you know, natural people who are natural light photographers only can photograph really well, depending on the lighting situation. Now, those people who were doing the natural light photographs at sunset, they would have to go back to the studio and they would have to lift the exposure on that photo to the point where the sunset would almost be gone just to get the people in the front to be properly exposed against the backdrop. So when you're hiring a photographer, I always say find a photographer who knows how to use light in all situations, not necessarily just a natural light photographer. Um, versus, it's about versatility, really. It's versatility. Hiring a photographer skilled in working with all types of light you can ensure their ability to adapt to any setting that they're in. They can handle outdoor shoots in different weather at different times of the day in different conditions. They can do low light. They can do indoor venues. Um, they know when to use a strobe or a flash to get a well-exposed image in any situation. Um, a photographer who works with various lighting conditions delivers better consistency results across different styles of shoots, whether it's natural, studio, or a combination of both. Um, and it's also a, a part about professional. If I'm hiring someone for me, I want to make sure that professional can do everything that I need to be done. So if I'm hiring a photographer, I need a photographer who can photograph in any kind of lighting situation, whether they use natural light or with a flash or a strobe light. Um, so if just using natural light only, the photographer is limiting themselves only certain times of the day or um, they're going to have to raise the exposure so high up that you're going to lose your, your beautiful sunsets. And I hate to see that happen to anybody. Um, now, I'm not saying that natural light is bad. I'm not. But there are moments where natural light should be used and there are moments where artificial light or strobes or flashes should be used. And your photographer should know how to do both of those. So next on my list uh, for hiring a photographer is called style and vision. And this is where it becomes very personal to the client. Um, every client has a different vision for what they're looking for and their styles will vary greatly. So when you're researching photographers, you want to make sure you look at their websites and you look at their Instagrams and check out their photos. And does it match or come close to what you're looking for um, in your style, in your vision? Um, you'll find a lot of the photographers will do what I call 
uh, it's a, for two hundred dollars you get a hundred photos. But when you look at all those hundreds of photos, they all look exactly the same. Is that the kind of style you're looking for? Do you want all your photos to look the same? Or do you want someone who's going to not give you 100 photos, but it's going to take their time and pose you and, 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 and put you in different arrangements to make all your photos look interesting and exciting? So think about what you're looking to get out of in your photos. Um, evaluate that your photographer's style aligns with your vision for whatever your project or event or family photos or a wedding um, that you want. Um, each photographer that I know has a unique style and an artistic approach to what they do. Um, ensure that their style complements your desired outcome. So they should have a portfolio, whether it's online or you visit them in their studio. I mean, the best way to see a portfolio is go to the website, check out their website. Um, look for a portfolio that resonates with your aesthetic, your preferences, and demonstrates the ability to capture the moments, the composition, and the technical expertise. Um, so be sure to check out somebody's online presence, or even better, go to their studio. Oftentimes, Photographers will have photos hanging in their studios that you can look at. Um, so style and vision is probably the most personal part of looking for a photographer. And the one that's probably the most important other than having insurance. <laughs> so my next point on hiring a photographer is something to think about um, is when you are looking for a photographer, if you possibly can, meet them in person. Think of it as if you are interviewing somebody for a job, because you are. You're basically interviewing this photographer to come to you and give you services that you are gonna pay for. So I highly recommend, if the photographer doesn't have a studio, go to a coffee shop, have them bring their portfolio on a laptop. Um, if they have a studio, go visit them at the studio and say hello to them. Um, you want to see if you can create a personal connection to your photographer because this makes the world of difference. Instead of, you know, being stressed out and butting heads with your photographer, you want someone you can relax with and be comfortable with um, and, and work with really easily. So feeling comfortable and confident in their abilities fosters better collaboration and allows for positive experiences for everybody throughout the entire process. So, and then also when you foster this connection, be clear to your photographer on what you need. Um, communicate your expectations clearly. Ask questions of your photographer and if they don't answer them, um, or offer to find an answer, you may want to consider going someone else. Um, discuss any concerns you might have before making a final decision on the photographer. Uh, this ensures that both of you are on the same page, resulting in a successful and enjoyable photography experience. Thank you, everyone. I really just want to take a moment to say thank you for listening to my points and my ideas and thoughts on what people should look for when hiring a photographer. If you have any questions or, or any comments or whatever, feel free to reach out to me. All the contact information will be listed in the description below. Also, uh, keep up to date. I'm going to be doing more of these videos that are, are geared towards the client side of photography versus the, the photographer side. You can find anything on photography on YouTube about how to use a camera and setting up shots. But there's really not a lot of information for the consumer, for the person looking to hire a photographer. So please like, subscribe, hit the bell. Um, we'd love to have you on board as, a, as on our channel and look for more content um, on what you can do to make your photography experience that much better. Thank you.